Today we are making a quite powerful permanent magnet generator out of a car alternator. We add permanent magnets, we remove the rectifier, we design some 3D printed parts and test it out to see the maximum power. I've been preparing this for some time because I really want to reproduce the experiment from an old free energy video that I've made a few months back. And for that I've already bought a huge expensive induction motor but I still need the car alternator part. I really want to prove that the free energy video is fake. But we need to change the alternator to work with permanent magnets, to have an AC output instead of DC and maybe even increase the power and voltage. This is still an experiment, so I can't really know the final results for sure, so keep watching till the end to find out and see the entire process for designing a new rotor, selecting the magnets, removing the rectifier and testing out the final power of the generator, so let's get started. Ok, so first of all the car alternator. You can check my previous video about how it works internally if you want more information. But for today we need to change it. But before we do that, a quick message from my sponsor. Hey guys, PCBWay is sponsoring this video and let me just tell about their services. For example, look how awesome their prototyping PCBs are and you can get this for only $5. They are so professional and they will make your project work a lot better and to order such PCBs you only need a few minutes on their website where you can select any configuration that you want for your boards. Along with that you can also order the SND stencil for soldering the components using solder paste. And you can also use their services for flexible PCBs and create some unique projects. And if you want to make your project start to finish you can get the PCBs assembled together with the mold injected part or maybe 3D printed, metal parts or other CNC services, all with PCB way. Ok, so this alternator outputs DC voltage, around 14 volts in this case and more than 100 amps of current. It will output DC voltage because it already has a full bridge rectifier at the output made with these diodes. I've already opened it a few days ago and it was very hard because this is a second hand alternator and it was all rusty and almost glued together. That's why I had to cut the main shaft so we'll need to make a new one. It was impossible for me to save the shaft. Anyway for a normal one you only have to remove 4 long screws and it will open. This here is the previous rotor. As you can see it has no magnets but instead it has an electromagnet. As you can see when I apply power to this coil it gets magnetized and acts as a magnet. And these spikes will act as a magnetic field conductor so basically creating a north and south pattern just as a normal motor. Just a quick explanation, even if the permanent magnets are stronger a car will use an electromagnet because you see you want to keep the output voltage at around 14 volts. But when you are riding your car, the engine won't ride at a constant speed. You will accelerate, decelerate and so on. So if the speed of your engine is not constant, the output of the car alternator won't be constant uh, neither. So if you want to have a constant 14 volts, what you will have to do when the engine is rotating too fast, just uh, decrease a little bit the magnetic field of the electromagnet by decreasing the voltage. In that way the voltage at the output will stay at 14 volts. And the opposite if the engine of the car is rotating too slow just increase a little bit the voltage at the electromagnet, the magnetic field will increase and the output will stay at 14 volts once again. That's why we need electromagnets and not permanent magnets. But obviously today we won't use this for a car alternator, we want to make a generator and we want to get the maximum output. That's why we'll use permanent magnets which will have a much stronger magnetic field. There, so we will swap this rotor with permanent magnets, that's what we will do today. And that's because they are a lot more powerful, so we could increase the power output for the same rotation speed. But they also are more efficient, because having to constantly power an electromagnet is not efficient at all. So I've made a few measurements. First of all since I had to cut the old shaft, I will make another one using a 10mm threaded rod. And that's great because like that I'll be able to add my own pulley and connect it to the induction motor for the future experiment. I cut the threaded rod to size, around 17 cm long. I now measure the bearings holes. In my case I will use these kind of bearings because these ones are a lot cheaper. 
but since this is a lot smaller, I design a small plastic collar to go around it. The bearing will fit inside and this entire part will fit inside of the car alternator frame. And now I could add the shaft on these bearings. Next I measure the space for the rotor. And have in mind that I will use these magnets. And these are 5cm long, 1cm wide and 3mm thick. The original rotor has 12 poles. But I will use 24 magnets in pairs because I don't have magnets that are that big. So in Blender I create the main shape of the rotor. Then I create the magnet and multiply it by 24, separate it 15 degrees one of each other. And I subtract that from the rotor cylinder. Then I add a threaded rod hole and a few more holes for cooling the structure. And now I have my rotor. And actually I had to print it twice, because the first one was almost touching the generator walls. Ok, so the idea is to glue the magnets in place with super glue. But that won't be enough. Because when this is spinning, the centrifugal force will be very high. So on top of the magnets I will add some sort of nylon wire, which is very strong, and it will keep them in place for sure. So get all the magnets and mark the south and the north face. And now we glue them on the plastic rotor, one by one, but don't make my mistake of placing them south north south north, because actually I had to remove all the magnets and place them once again with south south, north north and so on. I'm such a genius. Anyway the rotor can be made out of plastic because it shouldn't get hot. The part that will heat up should be the part with the wires and not the rotor. Comparing this generator with my 3D printed motor, it's kind of the same, but this one is an in-runner and also has a lot more power. First of all the 3D printed motor had the core made out of plastic, so the magnetic field was not properly directioned and also had a lot of losses. But this generator has very thick wire that could handle a lot of current, and also it has a metal core between the wires, pointing and conducting the magnetic field a lot better. Also the core of the 3D printed brushless motor was getting hot and the plastic could melt. But in this case the rotor will stay cool, because it has the magnets and not the wires. Ok so now the 3D printed rotor has the magnets glued in place. But to make sure that will stay in place, I will apply a layer of very hard nylon wire. I wound up the wire around it. And then I also apply a layer of 2 element epoxy on top of the wire using a brush. So like that it will stay compact and the rotor is done. So let the resin to dry a little bit and I also add some tape on top of that, just to seal it well. Make sure it could still fit inside of the alternator, without touching the walls. Now get the 10mm threaded rod. I place a screw nut and the washer on top of that and I add the rotor. Leave around 1cm of the rod out. And on the other side I add two more screw nuts and I also tie them, so now the shaft will stay fixed on the rotor. I add two more nuts as a spacer and that's it. I fit the rotor inside of the generator, on top of the previously added bearing. Then I add the top bearing. And now I can close the case. I add the screws and tie them. Now make sure that the rotor could still rotate and that there is no friction. And looks like the generator is ready, but remember if you want an AC generator we need to remove the diode bridge. So I get a few screws out, I separate the wires from the diodes and remove the rectifier part. This is the full bridge rectifier and I will save it for later in case that I want to make a DC generator. Ok so now we have 6 wires output, because we have 3 coils inside. And we could connect this in a star or a delta configuration. I will connect them in a delta configuration. So we merge the coils in series and these 3 connections will be the output. I add some long wires as well. And now the generator is done. Let's test it a little bit. And I don't have a proper testing setup, but I'll do my best. First of all let's measure the voltage. I connect a multimeter at one phase of the output and put it in voltage mode for AC. 
I rotated the generator using a drill and measured the voltage without any load at the output. And I also tried to measure the speed for later calculations. I was expecting a bit more, but the maximum voltage I got on my multimeter in AC mode is around 8 volts, so maybe a 15 volts peak to peak average on one phase. So I don't know how the people from the fake energy video are getting 220 volts AC, because I'm using better and bigger magnets and only get 15 volts peak to peak. Anyway, I want to test the current output as well. And my multimeter could measure an average of AC current, but it could only go up to 10 amps. But this generator could easily overpass that value, as you can see here. That's why I'll use a current clamp. I set it to 1 mV for each 100 mA of current. And first I short circuit a phase of the generator and add a clamp. I measure the maximum current peak. And as you can see I get a peak to peak value of 1.28 volts. So we divide it by 2 and using the clamp scale, that equals to a current peak of 64 amps for each phase. And we have 3 phases. And that's quite a high current value. And yes, I know this is current peak and not average. My multimeter could measure current average but only up to 10 amps. So I can't really measure the average with my current clamp because I don't have a clamp multimeter. Ok, so we can measure the voltage over a short circuit. So I will add a small load that is made out of resistors of 1 ohm. I connect the current clamp but also an oscilloscope probe, so we can get the current and the voltage. We get a peak to peak of 16.1 volts for the voltage and 490 millivolts for the current. And if we do the math, those are peaks of 200 watts for each phase. So the power output is quite high even if the voltage is below 20 volts. And I know this is not average AC measurements for all 3 phases, but for that you need a complicated setup, with 3 different loads and also be able to measure the AC current average as I do with my multimeter, but I can do that for values above 10 amps. And also the formula for measuring AC power gets quite complicated. Anyway, knowing that we have peaks of 200 watts for each phase is enough for me. And now let's see if I can rotate the induction motor. This is a 1 phase motor the same as they are using in the fake free energy video. That's why I only connect one phase from our generator. This motor has 3 connections inside, but that's because we need 2 huge running capacitors. And to change the rotation direction, we need to connect them like this. I connect the generator to the motor, and start generating power with my drill. And as you can see, it doesn't have the power to even start up the motor. And that's because these induction motors will need high voltage to jumpstart the rotation. And that's another indication that the free energy video is fake. By the way, this generator could now function as a powerful brushless motor. So I connect it to a powerful ESC, a 12V battery and a radio receiver. And as you can see it acts as a powerful brushless motor. So maybe I could use this for an electric cart, right? Anyway, if you want to use this as a DC generator, just keep the full bridge rectifier connected and add the big capacitor at the output. And that will give you DC voltage and the value will change according to the rotation speed. That will be great connected to a wind turbine or a water turbine and supply your home appliances. You have more information on electronics.com, so check that out. And you can also download my 3D files and get the part list for the bearings and magnets. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it. And the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons, to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below. Uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts. All this kind of stuff will support my channel. So thank you very much once again.